to do with Krishna consciousness. So what makes some things within the purview of Krishna consciousness is our own consciousness. When we are thinking that this is, I want to make this place as an offering to Krishna. Then the, the whole thing switches into something else. So that's one part. The second part of it is that we have to realize our own position. We are not in a position where we can, I'm talking about myself here, you may not, may be in a position. I'm not in a position where I can just leave everything and just join the temple. And then like uh, dedicate myself to a brahmachari life. And at least my life situation does not allow me even from a uh, spiritual point of view. Because I have a family, I have a kid, there are different responsibilities that I have. It's not going to allow me to do those things because it's part of uh, loving Krishna is also to take care of those that Krishna has placed in our life. So it's not like um, that the different family members that we have, have, they are just there all of a sudden. It's Krishna who has placed. So there is a responsibility towards them and that responsibility is not just about like attending to their material welfare but it's about just keeping in mind how we can redefine their spiritual trajectory back to Krishna. So we have to carefully think that way. So we have to see our family members as an opportunity to serve Krishna <coughs> by, uh, by making a collective effort. So like for example husband and wife, the best thing that they can do is to be very close to each other and assist each other in their journey of Krishna consciousness. If the husband and wife have separate agenda, it becomes very challenging to manage. That's why in our devotional life, one of the things that we are trained to work on is for husband and wife to have very intimate relationship. And that intimacy is not about just um, physical intimacy. It's not at all about physical intimacy. The intimacy is about the the intimacy at the level of consciousness, how our consciousness is unified in the direction of pleasing Krishna. So that's the only way we can bring Krishna to the center of our lives. So husband and wife relationship, when they are strong, it can act as a tremendous uh, preaching field. Like in the sense, it can act as a uh, wonderful foundation for our preaching. Then the wife can assist the husband, husband can assist the wife in in trying to do some wonderful service in Srila Prabhupada's movement. So the second part that I wanted to say is that, so from our side we should be clear whether we are ready for like a full surrender. So we are going to the office for a reason. The reason is that I am not completely purified of, our condi of my conditioning. Therefore I need to go to the office. If I don't go to the office, let's say I join the temple. Then all of a sudden, oh, I miss writing programs. I miss managing people. I miss doing this. You start thinking. It's going to happen if you take such a premature step. Again, I, yesterday also we were discussing that our affinity for Krishna is not strong enough to make such kind of a drastic step. And Krishna does not recommend that. So from our side, the best thing that we can do is that use our current opportunities that Krishna has provided and to spiritualize that and making that as a nice, beautiful foundation to systematically please Krishna. And um, the third thing that I wanted to also say is that it also requires parallel intelligence. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an art. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. And that's why I wanted to cite Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami wanted to just surrender his life to to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, like you stay there. Stay wherever you are and when the right time comes, I'll pull you. But how do you stay there? So he gave a beautiful analogy. The analogy that he gave is, it's just like an unchaste wife stays in a house while keeping in mind that I want, whenever I get the right opportunity, I want to just meet my paramour. Um, so now you may wonder like, so here by the way paramar in our context is Krishna. So apparently it may look like the office is a nice place of marriage like where we are married to our office work. 
and but all the time we are unchaste to that office environment. We are just looking for opportunities to exploit our official environment in order to please Krishna. And always trying to think, when will I get this opportunity? When I would be completely purified of my conditioning so that I can completely surrender my life to Krishna. Looking for that opportunity, anticipating, awaiting that mercy from Krishna. So, so basically, we are completely then detached from the office work, but we at the same time care about uh, participating in the preaching mission of Srila Prabhupada and that's why we are going to office because we want to set a nice example and whenever we get the right opportunity uh, share the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita that we are uh, applying in our daily life and, and allow others to also purify their lives. So now coming back to this analogy, as you can see it's a very, very challenging kind of circumstance. Like a wife who is not at all like devoted to her husband and she is constantly meditating on meeting her paramour. It's a very extraordinary difficult circumstance. It takes an art to do it properly. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains like how she does it. She does it in such a beautiful way that nobody even suspects. <laughs> that means like he, she carries out her household responsibilities in the best possible manner. So nobody even has a clue what is going on, what processing she is going through internally. So likewise, we keep our consciousness sacred, which means that my consciousness is meant for pleasing Krishna. I mean, all the things that I'm doing, I'll take, accept those things which are favorable to my Krishna consciousness, reject those things which are unfavorable to my Krishna consciousness, and do it in a, in a manner, in such a way that nobody else around has a clue that actually I'm doing that way. Because from the immediate boss's standpoint, he will say, oh wow, this guy is so efficient in my office. Let me give him promotion. And they will say, this is probably the best person I, I got. That's fine. That's his problem. But from our side, our meditation is that I am doing things in the best possible way for the pleasure of Krishna. Not for the pleasure of the immediate boss. You see? So, so it takes an art to be able to, to do these things uh, in a way that, that one does not suffer the consequence of either neglecting one's work or like then, then immediately like they will see oh this guy has started like going to Krishna temple or hanging out with this ISKCON devotees and from that point we are noticing that this guy has become quite slackened in his work so this spiritual life is not good this is our responsibility to make sure that at least this conclusion nobody gets they should get a get the conclusion that because of applying Krishna consciousness, because of associating with the devotees, because of going to the Iskon temple, this guy has become super efficient. Therefore, we should also go. That's the message that others should derive. And that's our responsibility. That's the mission. And that's where it, things become uh, an art. So, um, in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a wonderful verse uh, which gives a very wonderful practical formula for life and that verse is um, how does it start that verse what is that verse? It's awaiting Krishna's mercy and Tattenu Kampam so Samik Shamana Bhunjan Evat Makritam Vipakam um, Namaste Mukti It's a very beautiful verse which also teaches a wonderful way of leading our life. It says that there are three principles that we should live by. So Tat Tenu Kampam Su Samikshamana Bhunjan Evatmakritam Vipakam. So one has to constantly um, await to receive mercy from Krishna. Anukampam is mercy. Tattenu kampam su samikshamanu. Always like looking for uh, Krishna's mercy to act into our lives. While, while what is happening? Um, Tattenu kampam su samikshamanu. Bhunjan evatma kritam vipakam. 
understanding that all these different varieties of circumstances of life that sometimes appear to be like too challenging why are they happening we have to take responsibility for them we have to take responsibility for them in this way that they're actually like i deserve much worse than this if krishna were to take account of all the the past sins that i have committed but somehow krishna because he is so merciful he is just giving a token punishment just a token thing like prabhupad uh, gives this analogy that it's like my head was supposed to be chopped but just my finger got chopped <laughs> that's krishna's mercy i mean if all the reactions were to work upon me in its like full blow that's what what was supposed to happen but krishna is so merciful he's just giving a token punishment so that i can just increase my dependence on krishna so one takes full responsibility for the different circumstances that we face so eva atmakritam vipakam that i have i am the one who is responsible for what is happening the different circumstances that are being presented to me and then um hrit vak vapur bhir using heart uh vak means speech and vapu with the body vidhan namaste one offers one's obeisances one's respects to krishna which means like one carries on with one's devotional life understanding that i will have krishna's protection then for such a such a person what happens is that um jivatayo who is able to live like that mukti padesa daibhag one becomes a natural inheritor of the kingdom of god which means that one becomes qualified to back go back home back to god the way i would like to present this verse in a very simple formula is like this that three things you should remember and that is yes thank you and please so whenever some circumstances come into our life the first thing is acceptance yes i accept it because i deserve it and probably i deserve much more than this so yes that acceptance is the first thing and then the second thing is that the thank you krishna for giving me this opportunity to increase my dependence upon you to serve you nicely so thank you and then after you have thanked krishna for that most difficult circumstance what's the next thing to do please help me <laughs> it's not that like otherwise it's just pride krishna let my reactions bombard me with different it, it, in fact it's one of the sins of the mind to think that let all the the calamity come and i can suffer of my reaction that means like i am independently capable of suffering whatever reactions that i am due that's a prideful statement but here it's not a prayer of pride it's a prayer of requesting krishna for mercy that that although i deserve so much but i need your full shelter to face that and not only to face that but to uphold the principles of krishna consciousness and not only that upholding the principles of krishna consciousness but uphold the principles of krishna consciousness in such a way that others feel inspired to take up krishna consciousness and that is the the missionary spirit that we have to carry no matter where we are whether it's in the kitchen or whether it's in the office or whether it's in the altar it doesn't matter is the same missionary spirit which is to how we can just uh make sure that we are progressing towards krishna and also inspiring others to move towards krishna and that's what is the parallel intelligence the parallel intelligence is that example like where one is always thinking about the the real beloved which is krishna and then uh, carrying out one's uh, responsibilities with uh with preciseness with with utmost efficiency but keeping in mind this is meant for only pleasing krishna although this work itself has no relation whatsoever to krishna but here i am trying to represent shila prabhupa represent the movement so let me do things in a proper way and then like then the right things will happen now all these things can happen properly only when we have a shelter of a bona fide spiritual master we cannot do it without having that shelter which means that we have to understand that we are simply a product of mercy 
whatever things are happening, whatever strength that I am getting to carry on with my devotional life, it is coming only by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. And therefore, the Vedic literatures emphasize that accepting a spiritual master is not an option. It is an absolute necessity for progress in spiritual life. So when, and it's not like just one accepts a spiritual master and goes to the initiation, but it's a lifelong connection, and not only lifelong, it's an eternal connection that one is establishing with the spiritual master. That means I want my life to be guided forever under those instructions. So none of these is going to be very effective until and unless our life in its whole, uh, in its entirety is guided by the the instructions of a bona fide and qualified spiritual master. And we have to be also accountable to such a person. And we have to express that these are the challenges that I am facing. How do I deal with these challenges? And then, when there are instructions given to, to uplift our consciousness and to, to, to show us the right way and the right mood to approach them, then we should wholeheartedly accept and apply them. So the whole balancing art, this striving for balance, if you want to try to summarize, it's basically taking spiritual life in a guided manner, in a careful and guided manner. Understanding that we are representing Srila Prabhupada at every moment and therefore um, our life better be guided. Thank you very much. I don't want to uh, speak more but I would like to hear more from you if you have any questions.